Okay, so now I'm ready to explore a color palette. I have also prepared a few art supplies if I wanted to go down the route of mixed media. So I've got a white gouache, which basically I could attempt to mix with one of the ink tense colors and see what we create. This is in case I wanted something very opaque, um, but of different texture there. I could also use some acrylic paints in white. Um, I might do that a bit later. I also have a couple of different pencils ready. So here we have some of the Derwent drawing pencils, which I really, really love. I keep on <laughs> saying that in every video that I mention them. Um, and then I have the <laughs> legendary Ink 10 72 pencil set that I mentioned in the first half of the video. And basically they are the ink tens, but in a pencil form. So sorry about the lighting changing. So I might want to use them. I haven't decided exactly what I'm doing, but I'm just giving myself a few options. I also have some colored pencils ready on the go. So these are the Derwent Light Fast. So the colors will correlate throughout their different uh, mixed media product ranges and so you know I could help myself if I wanted some textural effects okay so where shall I start I think I'm just going to start by creating um, a mix of something like a color and because it's very summery and hot I'm feeling something juicy so I'm going to go into the sun yellow to begin with. And then I will add some of the meadow into this. Now remember this is a graphite tint. I haven't tried mixing the two before I had these colors so I don't know what will happen. I can see lovely graphite separation there. So that's a lovely bit of juicy green, but I want it a bit more intense, just tiny little bit. So I might add a touch of bright pink. Let's see, it only needs a little bit. I don't want it to be too green. So that's nice, kind of like a chartreuse type of a color. So with that, I'm just going to start adding this onto here. Got loads of water. Just a nice kind of bloppage. Um, if I wanted something even a bit more, I suppose I could take one of those flat brushes. They're really designed for more pain, so I don't know how that's going to go now. But I'm just going to take all of this and just sort of create more larger swatch in a way okay if I wanted to add a bit more vibrancy I'll go back in and just build up the color ever so slightly again with this blue in here there we go and then just build up the color. Now this paper doesn't do very well with a lot of water there, so I need to be mindful about that. So I'm just building up a little bit. Like so. I like what I see here. And I kind of feel just really experimental. At this point, <laughs> don't expect me to try and explain what I'm doing here because the best art happens when I just don't think about it. And then I just really love how it sort of comes out. Um, okay, I feel like if we still add a bit of the artichoke from the pastel shade, we still will be within that same color. Just overlap it in some places like so. See what happens. Quite like that. 
and now I feel we need some pink but of course what I could do is use the poppy red with the white gouache and let's see I want a pastel pink um, and possibly more of a like a peachy pink so then I could add a bit of the mango into there so let's try and mix up a lovely color just before I mix up a pink um, as I don't have enough pinks in the light fast range um, Devon kindly send me some pinks and reds and purples from their um, color soft range and I actually really really like these pencils so I have a few pinks here which I definitely love and I'm going to pick them out just in case I want to use them later so let me tell you first of all the color I used here was the Durbant drawing pencil in light sienna then I picked out here pink lavender bright pink and pink now this is what I would do at this point I would find a little space on the paper and just do tiny swatches just to kind of quickly see if I like the colors so this one for instance is way too warm so I know I don't need that and then there's a blue pink and that's also a bit too much for this color combo so I will keep the pink if I wanted to use it later so doing these tiny swatches on the paper are very very useful there is another pink which is a little bit lighter even it's a soft pink and that's also nice kind of as light as this color so it might not be relevant but I'll keep it there so let's try and uh, mix up a nice pink so how would I do that I would take my white as a base color and then probably with a palette knife if I can find one no, I can't find one, so I'll just go with my brush then. Get some nice bit of white. Water. And then some pink. So to get the pink, I'll probably use a different brush. Let's use a flat one. So we're going to this poppy red. Now I have never done this before with this specific two art supplies so I need to experiment to see how much paint I need, how intense it is. So this is nice but now tone wise it's nice but I now I want to just um, warm it up and make it a bit more peachy. So let's see, I could add orange or I could add yellow. So let's start with orange. So this is mango. Okay, this is very pretty. I like this color mix a lot. So I'm just going to swatch it here and yes that's a good one maybe a touch too dark so I might want to add some white to this so that should be enough now this is pretty so I'm mixing all the colors in and now I could go ahead and swatch this color out. So there you go. That's the perfect peach I wanted. Okay, so let's just go in. But generally, actually, I will go ahead and dry this part. So I don't want the gouache going on top of the wet paint. I want it to be like quite sort of solid. So I'll dry this and I'll meet you in a second. Okay, so for this portion, I will use a spatula now typically I use this uh, it's not a spatula what is it called 
don't have the name for it, but it's a Mini Zero One Catalyst by Princeton. So this tool really helps me when I'm using um, acrylic paints. I haven't used it with gouache before, uh, but let's try. So I'm just going to somehow load up some of it. <laughs> it's not obviously the same and just kind of use it in a similar way how I would use uh, acrylic paint. So I quite like that actually. I will leave it at that because I don't want to cover up too much and I will go ahead and dry this. Okay so um, because it's gouache it has dried matte and it's all sort of one-dimensional. I like texture in my artwork so I have grabbed some Liquitex titanium white and with what's left in terms of color here I'm just going to add a tiny bit of paint of acrylic paint I really don't need that much and I'm going to now with this spatula mix it in here hopefully get enough color if it's a bit sort of dry obviously it's acrylic paint I wouldn't want this to dry too fast and it's very hot today uh, I don't want to be messing about with the cleaning of the palette so I'm just going to very quickly do a bit of this before it all dries on me and that's a nice color so I'm just going to go ahead now and creates some texture. Like that. I want it thicker and I want texture. So this might be a bit much, but don't worry. I'll show you how I would sort of tackle it to bring things back. There's always time to rescue things. So just build it up where I want to and then make it less where I don't want to. Okay, I'll leave that to dry. I have now gone through my pencil collection just again to see if I can find anything because I'm not sure adding some pinks at this point will help um, bringing a bit of contrast. So you can see this light pink is sort of the same color as these. So we really don't want to be adding on that. We want some contrast and also knocking back a little bit of this acrylic paint. So what I would do is this. I went through some of my greens and these are the colors I picked out. So from the Durban drawing I've got crack green and this color is very similar to the artichoke from the pastel shades and I'm going to swatch it up here and yeah that's a little bit on a muddy side so I want something a bit brighter than that and then I also have a green earth from the light fast range nope that's not the color I want or at least I'm not sure just yet so then we have light olive spring green and sherbet lemon now these are all all intense which means they need a bit of water and they will look interesting so let's see I'm swatching them out in this order and now I can see that these colors are definitely going to bring that pop that I'm looking for so I'm just going to wake up the color slightly so immediately I can see this color would work <gasps> this color would work and I know this color would work, yeah. So this is a good trio here. Um, so to do that, I think what I would do is go over some of these dry areas. And this is how I would knock back some of this acrylic because it's just kind of needs to be broken up a little bit, just too much of it. So I'm just going to doodle to begin with an area that I'm wanting to knock back slightly. In there I'm going to add the other colour as well. 
and I'm going to also think about this area just to bring a little bit into there and now my favorite sherbet lemon this is gorgeous so the sherbet lemon I want to come out onto the paper because it looks the best on the white background so I'm just going to yeah you can't see it on here so I'm just gonna add some more up here as well coming out okay so now what we're going to do is add a bit of water and that will melt the color and immediately we are not just seeing the acrylic paint anymore so I'm leaving some of these untouched and some of them I want to melt into the paper or onto the acrylic paints like that depending how much you want to melt them you can just go ahead with the brush and work your way through so I'm quite happy with this now I feel like I want something a bit more this way so maybe I'll just use some of this green just to bring it into the center like that now that looks quite nice to me I have to say I do like this color and I wonder if I could bring a little bit somewhere into this so it's quite a bacon pastel so let's see if I can just add it on top of the acrylic and just connect it back to this area right here I'm quite happy with it I'm happy with the color palette so I think best thing to do <laughs> is to leave it because I feel I am tempted now I also got now some of the acrylic paints lifted so I'm going to remove it as I don't want to seal the paint pens okay that's it or maybe not <laughs> just smoothing the edge of it and I feel like tiny bit of that pink that I picked from before. Do we want it to be pink pink like this? I'll try somewhere, see if I like it. Just a little. Very small, so I don't want it to be kind of taking too much attention. Therefore, I'm layering over something that already exists here. Actually, that will work quite nicely in this corner. That's it. So, that's my little color palette um, abstract art. Just experimenting with textures and things. Let me dry it so you can actually see once things have settled properly. Okay, so it's all kind of looking better now in terms of dryness. So there's a bit of texture that I could maintain from the acrylic paint, which is quite nice. So I wanted to um, look back at the previous green and pink color palettes that I had here. So this time it's more mellow. It doesn't have as much color intensity, but I also quite like this pastel color almost a sage toned green which works really quite well with the pastel pink as well as this lovely chartreuse color so i quite like it but i feel like there's still something that needs to be added and i don't quite know what it is because usually at that point it just starts to become too much and i'm quite cautious of that I do like this grey, however, I have to say, but I feel like if I will start adding the grey now that it possibly will just be going into too many colours. So what I may do is take a colour that I already like from this composition and blob it somewhere else just to connect the eye. And I think actually this area would have been better with the chartreuse green. So I'm going to go into this 
um, color that I've mixed up before and I'm going to do it again so sun yellow and meadow and a bit of the bright blue so it's almost too too green now but that's okay so there we go I will still maintain some of that uh, sage green underneath I think layered over each other they're so pretty they're quite transparent and gorgeous and I may just refresh a couple of these areas with the same that's it just building it up a little bit okay that's enough with the fussing about it I feel like I want some pencil marks though <laughs> it's so difficult to stop in time just stop in time and that's it um maybe just a couple more okay let's see doesn't want to go with the acrylic much or oh, actually not the acrylic the one that i layered the artichoke over so or, or rather it doesn't want to go over the artichoke but anyway that should be enough here okay that's it definitely it so the whole purpose was to look at colors um and a harmonious color palette something that's nice and balanced and i really like what we have here like i said the sage pink was a good addition to it so that's it i hope you found it useful and try some of these sort of limited color palettes and explore smaller sets that are slightly different from your traditional primaries and see what you can create and adding a bit of white either acrylic or gouache always can um, you know open up a few more doors in the sense that you can create different textures and opacity levels and uh, lighten things and you know take something as this beautiful bright red and create this delicious pastel peachy pink okay so thanks for watching and i will see you soon again